So here we have the hip, and now we need to trim it here. It's a big plate of tannin, very tough. So we need to cut that off, like so. Okay, just a little bit more here. Like I said, we're going to turn it into steaks. Here is a loose muscle. It's not, it doesn't look good on steaks, so we trim that off too. Don't need that. Goes in the trim. There it is. Cut that. Dry that fat a bit here because that just adds a not very pleasant taste to the the meat or the sausages and then we have to be careful in here somewhere is a gland we don't there it is we don't want this either we don't want we just have fat I, I don't I cut every gland and everything out in the big super stores they don't do that everything goes into the ground too so. oh, and here we have a big blood vessel running all the way up into the leg. So we cut that out, just a little incision here, a little incision here, and there it is. You don't want this in your steak either. Doesn't look nice and doesn't taste nice. Turn it around, the dried fat, cut it just a bit off. In, in case you're wondering, you only should dry age Animals like this one who have a really good, good, good fat layer, fat layer on it. If they don't, they dry out and you end up with so much wasted meat. For example, the tenderloin which was cut previously, that would be mouse dry, mouse dry. And uh, you couldn't do much with it. But because it has a big fat layer, it protects under the fat, keeps the moisture in the meat. So you can dry age them if they're lean. You shouldn't uh, dry age them more than seven days. After that, it starts the loss of, of meat gets critical. Well, that's a bit tannin here and crystal. We don't want this either. We just eat meat, not garbage. Like you buy in a big retail store where everything goes into the ground beef. So now for us, you can cut the steaks like this, but for, for us that's a little bit too big. So we cut that in half, like so, like so, and then cut the steaks. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? A beautiful little steaks. Yeah, just perfect. Like so. They look nice, don't they? cut-offs here, the tip ends, why do, uh, don't I draw them in the trim? These ones, you can make stir-fry of it, which is very tender, or uh, stew. In our case, I make stir-fry out of it. And I'm going to show you quick how, the, how I do stir-fry. Very lean meat. I cut them very thin slivers like that. Like so, and I'm just going to show you quick, I'm going to do that afterwards, because that's not part of the tutorial. And then when I have them here, see the grains of the meat run this way. So I cut against the grain very finely, like this. And this is stir fry that will melt on your tongue. See, just like that. That's the next against the grain, just like that. When you cut like that, keep your fingers curled up like that and the thumb behind 
the index finger. So it doesn't slip forward and you cut it off. If you hold the meat like that, you're very likable to cut in your finger. That way nothing can happen because the knife runs along here, not along here. The, the knuckles here hold the knife away from, from your fingers. And so you just slide the knife along your knuckles here. Like so. See? Now I hold, like so. Oh. Nothing can happen. And you can go really fast, like that. But it takes a little bit of practice, yes, to, till it becomes muscle memory. So, that's what my stir fry looks like. Right, now all we left off is with the back leg here. And to further process, I, I take the different parts of the muscles out here. And first we get rid of the egg bone. The egg bone is, uh, here will be the next leg then, is part of the hip bone that we cut off down here. So I take a sharp knife, make it even sharper, see this, and there's a little muscle in here that we have to take out, because that's good meat. Not this bit here, that's dry. And just again run the tip along the bone here, and down, and I take the hook. Again, always, I don't like to get the fingers right there, my knife has to be. That bone is unique, it has a hole in here. And I'm going to show you later, so we cut around the hole. Okay, always use just the tip of your knife. And take that out, it's coming. Over recent years, this little muscle has become a delicacy in many hosh posh restaurants, like so. And it's known as the oyster steak, just like this. It's known as the oyster steak. If it's cooked, slow cooked, braised, it's beautifully tender and very flavorful, but here it goes into the tray. So now we take the bone out here, and on top of the bone here, first we work here, now we work up here. Again, run the knife tip along, along here, and straight back, and we come into the hip joint. Okay, like this. And then go up here, and again, with the tip of the knife, just feel your way around the bone. And the, this bone here, it goes all the way under here, it's again, it's a big plate. It goes away here and around here. And on this hip here, it comes out, it goes like that. So what I'm going to do with the knife here is feeling the bone and run the knife tip along the bone. It goes up here. Every animal is a little bit different. Some, it goes, the shovel goes further up than by others, so I just feel my way around, and there it is. And by some of them, uh, it's very flat here, so you just cut around, but this one has a little hump in it. So remember I've been talking to you about that hole we have in here, and that's where my hook goes in, like in that hole here, and I just pull a bit. And just keep following the, the bone with the knife tip. It's a very curvy bone. It goes up and down, has little elevations and valleys. You see when I take it out, you hear the crack, I just cut the tenon through in the joint. Loosen that back here. And there it comes. There's some very tough tenons in here. But here it is. Cut through. Out. 
me, there's a big fat old tenon. And here we are. You remember earlier I told you about the liquid between, in, inside the joints, the, the pan and the ball, this liquid that lubricates uh, the, the joint. Now when you cut it up, that lubricant comes out, it's right here. This animal doesn't have much, but some of it, it's, it's quite a considerable amount. You want to clean that off, unless you work on a rubber mat. I don't. You want to clean that off, that's as slick as oil. You step on it, you're liable to slip and fall on your back. And if you have a sharp knife in your hand, that might can cause serious injury. So, the eye bone is out. Now we start taking out muscles. Uh, the first I take out, what I, everything I show you is the way I do it. Different butchers do it slightly different. So, first I take out the sirloin tip. Some places this is also called the knuckle. And the, re the way we take that out is, right here is the kneecap. Under here, under all this fat here, it's the kneecap. And that would be the heel by the animal. So we take that out, we cut along here, loosen that up a bit, see, cut into the joint, the joint becomes visible. The joint, and here is your kneecap, right here, see? That's your kneecap. So now you can see that fat, fat thing here. That's a seam. And that's what I cut along. And the bone here, the femur, is coming out down here. So that's what I'm heading for. Scrape along the bone. Same over here, you can't see it under the fat here. But there's a seam running all the way down here. If you want to bother about it, you can carefully peel that out. I don't. I just, where the seam is, find with the tip of the knife, the femur under here, and cut down in a straight line. Do the same over here. With the tip of the knife, find the femur under, under the muscle. I got it, it's right here. Keep it there. The tip of the knife, follow the bone right down, all the way. Then up here, see there's a little bit more of this gunshy glue here, or oil. So, cut around here, along the bone, like this. I take my towel, because I don't want any of this greasy stuff here. Take towel, and there it is. Look how clean the bone is, that's the femur. And then just here around the joint, like so. And that's our sirloin tip, or ball, or however you call it, we call it sirloin tip. Sirloin tip makes steak with a trim. Coming around you. The sirloin tip makes steak, roast, and so forth. I'm going to make roasts out of it. So we have a bit roast. Take that kneecap out, that's the kneecap. That little round bone here, the same as by us. But by us it's here, you see an animal, when they walk, cows, they walk on their toes. So the kneecap is actually by the, by the beef, what looks like the hip, but it's, it's the knee. And then here they have that, and then the, the feet. That's how they walk. All animals actually walk on their toes. Humans are the only ones that have a heel or switch to walk on. So oh. we trim a little bit. Everything that doesn't look edible or not right like me, it's trimmed off. There is a fat muscle here, quite tough, off with ground beef, make it tender in the sausage. Oh, the ground beef, see there's a bit old fat tenon here, out in your grocery store, that will go in the ground beef. Not by us, only what's edible. And what looks nice, there's a big old blood vessel here, out. 
garbage. I want to eat meat. There's a bit more here. I just eat meat. Okay, here it is, all trimmed up. And for us, that just would be too big a roast, so I cut it in half. Like so. It's a little bit more in here. Up, up. And now we're going to tie that into roast. So about two, two and a half, three pounds. And that's how I tie. A lot of people always ask me, how do you tie a roast? I'm left-handed, so you have to figure it out how to do it with the right hand, but it's really easy. This is the tag end. I hold it like this. See? Come on this end. And now it goes, the tag end goes underneath. And what you end up is with a thing like that. Now you repeat that same, go underneath, and maybe my wife can show that that's what it looks like when it's done, the knot. It's a slip knot. So I tie that slip knot, pull it tight by pulling on the main line, pull it tight, secure it, now it's tight. But it comes off again when I pull. So we have to secure the knot properly. So, like this. And then I just make a simple overhand, like that, and it's secure. That will not come off. Other boxes maybe make a different knot. That's how I learn it, that's how I do it. I'm gonna show you again. Tag end goes on here, underneath, see, underneath. And the same again, underneath. And that's what you end up with. That's what the knot looks like. I space them about a good inch. Tighten it down. And be, if you want to be really fussy about it, you want the old, for retail, you want all these knots in one line. It just looks nicer. So before I really tie it down, I'm going to adjust it till it's right, see? And now as I tie it, it comes right in line with that one. Secure it with a normal overhand knot, like so. Just like that. Tight. Never will come loose. We'll do screen caps and make it right-handed. <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. Oh, I can. So, so. That's how it goes when it goes quick. Some people I also see that they, they make loops in their hand and then but I don't know how that works. That's how I learn it, that's how I do it. And it goes just as fast. There we go. Square it up. That too, that I'm gonna cut into stew. And there is your sirloin tip roast. Beautiful, right? And tastes good too. Alright, next we're gonna take out the inside round and the inside round again you can't see it very well under all this fat but there's a seam you maybe just can see the end of it a seam running all the way up here and around here and that's called the inside round here in Canada elsewhere they have different names for it but we call it the inside round and it goes all the way down here and around here Okay, I just make a small incision with the knife, hook the hook on here and pull, and now you can see the seam is exposed. So when we just gently take your time, if you do it for the first time, run your knife along the seam, all the way over here. And what we open now is here, 
So, and here you see another muscle up here, that's part of, of the inside round. That's the actual inside round, this is just the, the cover of it. So we have to make an incision here and hook it in here, and there it is the seam again, see? Just like that. And then go all the way around the bottom here, that's a joint under here, along here, and just around the tip of the knife, all the way down along the femur all the way down and out here and now back here you have to be careful and just keep like I said be slow about it if you do it the first time just like this no. Till we're down, all the way. And now we cut here into the joint, it's the ball down here. See, it becomes visible, the ball here. And here we just cut straight through, a straight line. And there it is, that's the inside round. And all right, so now we clean that up a bit. And all this tissue here, that's all inedible, the little tissue, so we just gently slice it out without cutting too deep into the meat. And then over here, there's a tenon here that comes out, and right under the tenon you see exposed a blood vessel. There's a blood vessel running all the way from inside the... Uh, the the back into here, so we, we take that out. So I'm not gonna bother, I'm just gonna cut right down here, like so. And then that goes away, see that whole blood vessel? Yeah, that goes away, that goes into the trip. And here you see it's, it's exposed now. Yeah. That runs all the way up here and all the way over here. So that all has to come out. It all has to come out. You don't want that in your roast or your steak, see? That all has to come out. Garbage. That's a different of a butcher shop and the big grocery store chain where they put everything into the ground beef. That's why it's so cheap. No? That's what we'll do from this side, now on the top. Again from dry aging, see that's all gone dried up and black. And there's too much fat on here that all has to come off. A little bit fat is good on a roast. You always want a, a little bit fat on a roast, you can cut it away after if you don't like it. But fat keeps the meat moist. And we're going to pause in a moment. Alright, now so we removed all the dry meat, now we, we take a little bit of the fat off here. This is too much fat. It's a little bit dry meat too, off with it. So, trim, just trim the fat off a bit here, till it has about the right thickness. You know, you don't need an inch of fat on, on the roast. So a half inch is good. You can trim it off after you, you cook it. And like I said before, a few times, if if it's a dry aged beef, all that outer layer fat here is no good anyway, it's sour. And so you want to trim that off. So, and here we are. That's the inside round. Uh, we don't want too much roast, so I just use the leaner side. That's the, the less, on the inside is the less leaner side, and the outside is, is leaner. So, you want to. A nice roast here, and the rest I'm going to cut into stir-fry. 
So that's what it looks like, and that's what we're going to cut to so the three pound, three and a half pound rows. In case you're wondering, uh, this is our beef. All year I cut beef for customers and clients and at the end of the year I cut beef for our family. So after everybody else has cooked meat in the freezer, it's our turn to put meat in the freezer for a year. That's costume cutting, so whenever you have a beef or so, bring it to a costume cutter and they can do exactly the way you want it. Oh, that's about three pounds. Roast, nice roast. See how lean that is, with a little bit fat on here that keeps the moisture in. My wife, who does the camera here and helps me out, says yum yum. And she's right, it is yum yum. And as you see, if you just run the knife tip, it's always the knife tip along the seam here. Okay. Again, just slow, you don't have to hurry up uh, if you learn, especially if you learn. And then just straight down. And there it is. So, you see, you already see it's, it's a long cut. There's a big old gland in here. That goes in the garbage, all in the ground. Oh. Oh, you see, taking it shape. And now you can see why a layman or even a costumer could be fooled into believing that this is a tenderloin. And uh, I know from people who have been fooled into it. They came to my place of work and said, is that a tenderloin? And I said, no, that's not a tenderloin. And they said, that's what I have been told it is. In other words, their butcher cheated. Because this is a relatively economic cut. Uh, maybe $16 the pound versus $75 pound, uh, per pound for a tenderloin. So, you can make a roast out of this or steaks. Uh, I cut this up as a stew meat. So that goes here. And now we take out the last bit of the big muscles, and that's the outside round. And I know from an English butcher friend of mine, in Europe they call that the silver side, I believe. All right. But that's the outside round because that's, if you look at the animal from the side, that's the outside of the leg that faces you. Whereas the inside round is on the inside between the legs of the animals. So here we are. Run the knife along the bone here. That's a pretty tough muscle here because that's the muscle who supports the entire hind leg and is also in moved in the when the animal moves, it's, it's a heavily used muscle, more than inside round. So this one also makes roast, or, or some people even cut it up as a slow cooking steak. <coughs> I make stew out of it. Oh, there we go. Here there's another big gland in here. That elsewhere would end up in the ground beef or in the sausages. If 
you buy sausages in a, in a, in a meat in a grocery store, and, uh, you know, the cheap version of sausages, that's what they will hide in the sausages, all that stuff. That's why they're cheap. That's, uh, you can't have a dollar a pound sausages and expect to be all real meat in it. So, that's that. That's that. Here is a tough tenon in here. It's a little bit of that inside round muscle here. That we remove. That's going to be. And here is a really tough tenon. So we take this out. You don't want this in the ground either. Alright. And so again, we just with a sharp knife. Just like we did with the tenderloin, we just like filleting a fish. It's a really tough tenon here. If that would be in your food, you would bite your teeth out. There we go. Well, like I said, you can make steaks out of that or roast. Slow cooking steaks. It tastes nice, but we're going to make stew out of it. That's that. On to the next. If I don't clear the table all the time, things easily disappear. And end up where they shouldn't. Now we take out the calf muscle for the beef. That would be the calf muscle. We cut down here where, where the white ends. That's a tenon. That's where the beef hangs. If you cut up here, the whole thing falls down. So we cut under here in. Then we come on to the seam. And then just undo it like that. That makes good stew meat. Some people even tie that into a little roast. For my liking, it's a little bit on the tough side. You need to cook that for a long, long time. Well, then I make the slit in here because I do everything on the rail. I don't make any beef apart on the table. And hook that back in here. And now we loosen that up and have access to the rest of the meat that we're going to take off the bone. Again, I take my hook, make an incision here with a sharp bony knife. You don't need a long pointed knife for that. Run it along the bone here, which you can see. Again, always use the tip of the knife so you feel the bone. And just Cut that all around the joint here. Cut this big fat tenon out because I want to keep the bones and later on cut them up into soup bones and you don't want this tenon in the saw. Because you could jam in the saw and you could get seriously hurt. Here too, you run the knife tip along the bone here. Then make sure all these tenons, everything come out. So, and there it is. That's all there is to it for a hind quarter. All right, that was that. That's how we take a hind quarter apart uh, from the things I took off last. Like I said, I'm going to make stew and some uh, stir fry here. And then uh, we have to do some ground beef. I'm going to make some, uh, what did I say? Uh, Kielbasa type sausages, real kielbasa, you use pork, I use beef, so it's just a kielbasa style sausage. I'm going to make some fresh beef sausages and I'm going to make some burger patties and the rest is going to be all ground beef. 
I hope you enjoy this segment of On the Butcher Sport with Omar Boringer. And like I said before, thank you for watching. If you like our channel, subscribe to it. Hope you all have a great day and Happy New Year.